In regard to authentication, uh, well, we talked about the different types, and now we combine them. So we've got uh, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication, basically just using multiple kinds of the authentication that we have already addressed. So um, we have, well, we've, we've mentioned, you know, credit cards. Uh, something you have is the card, uh, generally speaking, with a chip uh, or something. But, I mean, in the old days, it was the Magstripe. Uh, just reading the Magstripe, uh, that gave you some indication, at least, of, of something you had because it stored the uh, credit card number and then uh, the PIN that you knew that confirmed, you know, so something you know, something you have. Two-factor authentication. Uh, that's uh, the old one. Nowadays, um, uh, some of them, uh, for example, using the uh, uh, the phone. Now, in a sense, that is something you have, which is access to a given phone number which is on a cell phone and can receive a text message with uh, a, a, a code with it. Um, uh, and generally speaking, that is backing up a system where it's something you know you have input a password. And it's, it's just using a little extra authentication. But again, you know, two-factor authentication, something you know, the password, uh, and then uh, something you have, the, uh, the phone number uh, and the, the process of accessing a, a code, a PIN, something that the uh, system can send you. Now, I mean, it can be um, a more convoluted system. We've got the uh, the one-time passwords, and particularly the challenge response passwords, um, and uh, very often there we have, uh, you know, it's the, the one time, it's something you have, which is the, the token that is used for the challenge response system, and, and it will have uh, uh, something built into it that uh, identifies you, um, uh, sometimes pretty uniquely, because... You know, the, the code uh, that's put in is, is put in for you specifically. Uh, but generally speaking, you have to put in a, a password or a, uh, a PIN, uh, generally longer than the uh, four-digit PINs that the credit card use, um, as uh, an extra authentication. So the challenge response system... Uh, you know, basically, um, you've got a, uh, well, I, I'm, generally speaking, that, that'd be a multi-factor, I guess, because you've got something you have, you've got the, uh, the pin, uh, sorry, the, the token, uh, you've got something you know, the pin, um, or password, and, uh, then you've got, again, uh, something additional, which is sort of something you know, uh, having access to the the system already to start the challenge response system and and uh, it will be uh, a part of a, a process there so you know we've got a, a variety of multi-factor <coughs> authentication systems um, that can be used um, we have uh, uh, sometimes on, on some of them even backed up with biometrics, for example, you've got a cell phone which you have yourself uh, secured with a fingerprint or uh, face recognition or, you know, whatever uh, additional uh, authentication you put on, have put on your cell phone so that the access to that number, uh, that cell phone number, uh, that's part of a, uh, 
you know, something, something you have access to the phone, uh, system, you know, we can, we can have, uh, a bit more authentication in that regard. So, uh, a number of, uh, a number of possibilities there. And, uh, you know, what, what is the most appropriate for your particular situation? You have to, uh, consider that and, and decide uh, what is going to be good for you, your enterprise, and your particular situation. Now, the uh, uh, this is not new. Um, we have had multi-factor authentication systems. Going back to, uh, at the very least, the Knights Templar. Uh, the Knights Templar had uh, a system. They had, they were a wealthy organization. They had a lot of money, and um, therefore could act in uh, a way a money transfer situation. Um, they uh, were probably transferring funds themselves, um, and the the various chapter houses uh, would have sufficient funds that they could. Uh, work out uh, arrangements for uh, access to funds uh, by people who were traveling. And the way that they did that, um, you would go into uh, a uh, chapter house in your local area, um, uh, bring in the money that you wanted to transfer, or have access to when you got to wherever you were going. And uh, they would they would write a letter. Now, the, the letter would be in code. The letter would be encrypted in, in a way, and, and uh, we can get into that in the cryptography section. And the... Um, uh, the amount of money would be specified, but in addition, uh, there would be you know this is this is something you have you have the encoded letter, uh, the encrypted letter, the uh, chapter host at the far end would know uh, the encryption scheme would be able to uh, get that information and and that would verify. but in addition, um, as well as something you have, which was the letter itself the uh, when when the letter was created, as well as saying how much money you had deposited and how much you were authorized to withdraw, the uh, the uh, letter would also contain a a code, um, a password, uh, or the answer to a question that only you knew. And so, you have something you have, the letter itself, and something you know. Uh, either a particular fact, or a password, uh, something like that. So, we have, uh, you know, multi-factor authentication systems. Going back, uh, you know, pretty close to a thousand years here. So, uh, we've got a number of possibilities here. And uh, this is something that we... Uh, uh, need to consider in the most appropriate way for our modern business as well.